two. From the historic Hotel Del Coronado, we welcome you, lucky listeners, to this special episode of the Relators Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Edwards. Alongside me today, we have physician, scientist, uh, I would say songwriter, author of <laughs> Beat, uh, uh, Eat to Beat Disease, Dr. William Lee. Doc, thanks for being with us today. Thanks very much. It's a pleasure being here. Uh, songwriter, I was going to say scientist. I had to memorize P-S-S-A. That's how I was getting to You know, science yeah. and music, uh, they yeah. all kind of blend together. Well, Doc, I've been starving to do this interview with you, but sometimes hunger is the best spice. So i got to ask you, what type of foods should I be or put in my Tabasco sauce on in this upcoming week, and how can your book help? Right. So I am a physician and a scientist, and I wrote my book, Eat to Beat Disease, really to address the same questions that I have myself, okay. and I'm you know, supposed to be pretty informed on things, uh, which is what should we be eating? And it, you know, it, the confusion we have is there's a superfood here and a super supplement there, and then you hear about one study that actually you know, cures a disease, and then the next week it gives you whiplash because basically the news basically reports the opposite is to be true, right? So I'm just like you. But I wrote um, the book really to clear up that confusion and the way to clear it up is to use science. And I'm going to answer your question, but I'm going to tell you the more important thing first. When it comes to food and health, it's not just about the food. It's about understanding how your body responds to what you put inside it. And that helps us better understand why things that we eat might not be good for us. And also, it helps us understand what choices we might make hmm. instead to actually activate it. And it, it's all about our body's health defense systems. Got it. So if you think about defense, that's what it is. Every time we eat, it's a countermeasure against something that might take us down. Mm, got it. I was, I was going to say, because there's so many diets out there nowadays, and some people prefer one versus the other, but what you're saying is that's completely normal because some people's uh, immune response has responded maybe differently to different diets. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to health, okay. and that's the key thing. And, you know, many people will want to actually take on a diet to lose weight primarily, and that's just fine. Uh, you know, people can actually try these different things, but I would say that most people would have a hard time adhering for years to the same diet. On the other hand, if you really think about what food is, food teaches us something about our brains, our personality, our families, our culture, and if you go back to cu culture itself, food and culture have been inextricably tied together for thousands of years. So part of what I wrote about in my book, Eat to Beat Disease, is to figure out, well, what is it about the wisdom of thousands of years of culture? And can we make some sense out of the foods that healthy cultures eat in terms of our really cutting edge science of how we understand how our body responds to what we put inside it? And the answers were really amazing, which is you know, understanding that our body is hardwired with health defense systems that anybody who wants to activate our health, whether it's with food or uh, uh, exercise or some other intervention, even a drug, it actually can change the way that we actually approach the problem of what we do for ourselves, including what we choose to eat. So maybe back to my original question. Okay. How do I start? How do I get involved? <clears throat> and, and how do I use this program? Yeah, OK. So it's really easy to think about um, in terms of your body's defense. So from the time we're born to our very last breath, we've got at least five core health defense systems. Let me explain them to, to you. And uh, anybody who's listening to this podcast, you can read about it in my book, because I give it a great deal of a definition. One of them is our circulation. It defends our health. We need to have good blood flow everywhere. Our oxygen, our nutrients, what we eat gets delivered through our blood. In fact, there's 60,000 miles worth of blood vessels packed inside our skin. It's really amazing. Wow. And it defends our health. Second, our stem cells, right? So when we were kids, our um, teachers told us that salamanders and starfish can regenerate, but humans can't. Wrong. That, that, text, that page of the textbook's been ripped out and rewritten. We do regenerate, and we can eat foods that can speed that up. Our microbiome, our healthy bacterial cells in our gut is so powerful, controls our, controls our mind, our healing, and our immune system. Our DNA repairing itself and our immune systems are really um, part of our uh, defense against everything from not only infection but including cancer. And somebody in their 80s or older actually has enough spunk left in their immune system to be able to wipe out cancer even after it's spread. And foods can a activate that as well. So back to your question. The first thing you said is your hot sauce. It turns out that chili, chili peppers contain capsaicin and other natural 
um, health activating systems that powerfully boost your immune system. And what's the evidence behind this? Is that there's a study out of, of China that studied thousands of people who eat hot spicy foods every day. And it found that those who regularly eat hot spicy foods on a daily basis actually have a reduced risk of all cause mortality. So pretty much you live longer if you eat spicy food. So number one, the first thing you did right is choose chili. And then the question is, what do you want to put underneath it? Got it, got it. Well, Doc, you said it starts from when I'm born uh, to when I decease, but you also mentioned it has a lot to do with your genomics and your, your genes and your, your ancestry. Um, how and why might my ancestry play a role in what I eat? Right, well, so if you, if you sort of pay attention to what's going on now in terms of consumer diagnostics, right? There are companies springing up faster than ever before saying that they can take a cheek swab, saliva, hair sample, stool, urine, and do the genetic testing the genomic testing to really understand our code and what's wrong with it. And based on what's wrong with it, to come up with a solution, right? So that's really consumer diagnostics and genomics. It's actually everywhere. And it's early days yet for how to use that kind of information. And I can tell you that how we're born is really uh, a, a result of who our parents were. And we can't, so we can't choose our, our ancestors, right? But what happens is that once we're born, Every decision we make actually can influence our genetics and change what we're what we've been born with doesn't change, but actually how the genes, the DNA functions afterwards. Okay, I'll give you an example. Uh, you drive a car. Do you do you have a battery powered car, or electric car, or do you have a gas car? A uh, hybrid, yes. A hybrid. Okay, so you're filling up at your car at a station, right? Yes. And so when you put that, uh, when you're filling up your tank, do you stand upwind or downwind? No idea. <laughs> you don't think about it, right? I but I can tell it. you, if you smell the fumes, you're standing downwind, right? right? A grizzly bear would tell you right. that. And if you're standing downwind, you smell those fumes, you're damaging the DNA in your lungs. Mm. So the question is, why don't you actually have mutations of your lungs that lead to lung cancer the next day or the next week? It's because our body is hardwired to protect itself against that kind of assault. Mm. Here right. we are in California, yes. beautiful, bright, sun sunny day. Right? Or if you're stuck in traffic and you've got the sun shining through the windshield or at the beach, you're, where the, the sunlight's damaging our DNA. So how come we don't actually get skin cancer every day? Right. Right? Because we're hardwired to defend ourselves against it. Mm. Off-gassing from furniture, secondhand uh, or even third-hand smoke. There's a million things that we're uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, having to protect ourselves against, even if you don't smoke even if you don't drink too much alcohol, uh, even if you don't actually do harmful things to yourself. And, and most people do eat some foods that can actually damage our health defenses. And so this is the reason why we need to start rethinking um, what healthy food means. It's not just some, you know, Mother Nature created a broccoli and that's it. As long as we only eat broccoli, we're going to be um, uh, impervious, you know, bulletproof to disease. Not that way at all. What we need to do is to every day mindfully support our body's health defense systems with different foods that can do that. See, and that might be the biggest problem though, because mindfulness for humans, like humans are so complacent, you know, especially with eating and what they do. So, I mean, I know what, what I ate in college, like just was, you know, not healthy whatsoever. Maybe from your reader's reaction yeah. reading this book, what have they come back to you with um, and, and how might you treat complacency? Right, so what you put, talked about complacency is the problem that we all have, which is that we're fine until we're not fine. Exactly, right. But what I write about my, my book, which actually most of the people that I have read this have given me feedback on is, this is the first book that allows me to lean into the foods I already love. Oh. And so I've got more than 200 foods that actually activate your health defense systems. And regardless of your cultural background or what you prefer to eat, or you know um, what your comfort food is, if you start taking a look at this list of more than 200 foods, I guarantee you that you're gonna be able to find um, more than a few that you go, man, I really love that, including your hot sauce, right? right? And so then you can start building your health um, uh, support by starting with the things you already love. So you're already ahead of the game. And I think it's different than saying, um, like a dietary book that says, well, you can't have this, you can't have that, you can't have that. Human nature abhors deprivation. Right? So when someone says you can't have something, your mind automatically goes, well, maybe I'll have a little bit of it. In this case, what I'm telling you about eating to beat disease, it can be pleasurable, it can fit with who you are, your culture. Just choose, start with the foods that you already love that actually already have the evidence to be able to boost your health defenses. Doc, you're a scientist. 
a lot of scientists, when they start to solve a problem, they start with a thesis. What was your thesis when you started to write this book, and has it changed? So my thesis when I started writing this book was really asking a very simple question, um, which is, how come we don't get sick more often? Right? If you think about it, yeah. like kids don't, kids might have a cold, but they don't develop Alzheimer's disease or morbid obesity or lung problems or di you know, I mean, yeah, some kids do get sick, but we, we don't see the same problems that we did when we get older. Now, I'm a medical doctor. In my training and in my practice, what we do, we spend all of our time trying to identify and, and put a put a pin in the tail, okay, uh, on the name of the disease. And everybody starts thinking about, so how, why does that disease happen? How does it work? How do we treat it? How do we cure it? And I started to realize there's a bigger question here, which is how come we don't get those diseases most of the time? And the answer that led me to write this book is because we are hardwired with defenses that we can actually um, boost that help us prevent those diseases. And you know, look, you, you go to the people that are living, you know, I'm sure you probably know somebody who's in their 90s or maybe even 100. Those people, how do they top off at those ages and still not be sick with the other things that, the other diseases that kill other people? It's because they've got really great defenses. So what, what I really wanted to do with my book is to ask the question, so what are those defenses? And what are some practical things we can do to boost them with food? Got it. Doc, it seems like you're really driven by your work and what you do. Um, maybe describe to our audience how that drive to solve this thesis, to test that thesis, um, has also catalyzed uh, your work as well. Well, I'm, I'm a big believer that uh, there's um, real progress that can be made uh, tackling problems if you go from outside of, of your own box. And so for me, as a medical doctor, I was trained to diagnose diseases and write prescriptions and treat them with interventions and drugs, right? And so what I started to do is to think, well, first of all, uh, what makes the diseases all the same? So that what, what are their common features? So if you start thinking outside of the box and asking the questions that other people don't ask. Mm -hmm. For me, it was asking, well, what makes diseases the same? Not like what makes them different? That's the complete inside out of what the uh, research funders do, the pharmaceutical companies talk about, even the professors at med school, I'm a, I've started to ask that question. Secondly, then when, uh, you know, after I, I've been involved with 34 FDA approved drugs and devices for treating cancer, vision loss, and complications of diabetes, right? So I've got a pretty good track record of putting science into practice. But then I started to ask another question that's outside of the box, which is not why do we get sick and what can we do about it, is how come we don't get sick more often and once we have that answer, what can we actually do to flesh that out? So then I actually started to think, when you're talking about health, right? Um, what is health, right? So it's, it's got to be more than ju ju uh, juicing, jogging, and yoga, right? I mean, those things probably count, but what's the underlying mechanisms? So then I went outside of my own box, and this is what I would say to the listeners. Go outside of your own box. It's not just being outside of other people's boxes. Right. You go outside of your continuously reinvent yourself by going outside of your own box. And I realized that some of the secrets to health may actually come out of my background in biotechnology. Mm. Understanding using the power of drug development and applying it not for disease and drugs, but for health and food. And once I started to you know, swap out those lenses, you know, all of a sudden like, there's this whole new world that opens up. I mean, you think about you know, those um, uh, pictures where you actually have um, you know how an insect actually looks at the world? Oh, right, right? Yeah. So like a honeybee looks at a, you know, we look at a flower and a, right. honey, and a honeybee actually looks, it looks through the lens and it looks completely differently. Right. And I think when you go outside of, like first think outside of the box, but then out, think outside of your own box in order to be able to really make progress and keep yourself fresh and challenged. Doc, thinking outside of the box is a, a trait of leadership. Uh, what would you define your definition of a real leader as? Uh, courage to confront the unsolvable problems. Mm. And I think that no matter what you do, whether you're a CEO, whether you're you know, um, a doctor you know, controlling a complicated case, whether you're the captain of a ship, right? I mean, what, if, you, if you are able to actually confront, or an astronaut, if you're able to confront the problem that seems like it's gonna be the end, like we, this is the insolvable problem, the impossible problem, and, you can, um, and, and you're not afraid to tackle that problem, to try to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. I think that that's actually a mark of a leader. Bravery and courage. Doc, I learned a lot in this episode today. I talked about a lot. I talked about how I can put my spice 
those chili peppers on all these different types of foods and foods that I like too. Uh, we talked a lot about um, uh, your, your research and how the body is a defensive mechanism already, and how we can enhance it with the foods that we eat. Um, and then we kind of wrapped it up with the kind of why your work purpose and your questions by asking the questions that many people don't ask. It's led you to think outside the box and use that bravery and leadership to get you to where you are today. Uh, Doc had a great time on the show today. Appreciate your time here. For Dr. William Lee, I'm Kevin Edwards asking you all to go out there be a real leader. Be courageous. Think outside the box. And always, folks, keep it real. Next time. Thanks very much. Appreciate you having me coming on the show.